mute. Hi, boys. Did you just hear Mr. Rogers? All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for joining us for Gregory's Forest Fables. I am going to unmute Gregory once I find his name. And I'm going to hand the show over to Mr. Gregory. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Blanket Ford. We are really stressed out over here. You know why we've been home so long? The Blanket Ford's a mess. I came in here this morning and it was just a disaster. So I'm, forgive me, I'm just trying to sweep and clean and it's a lot of work. <sighs> and the funny thing about doing a lot of work is it makes me think of a story about a boy who got a job one time. And it's a boy you might be familiar with. His name, we have learned, is Jack. Now, we already know a story about Jack, right? Jack climbed up a beanstalk. He met a giant. All kinds of things happened to him. But did you know that there are many, many stories about Jack? In fact, Jack is one of the most famous characters in folklore and fables today. So, the most famous story, of course, is Jack and the Beanstalk, the story that we told on Monday. But did you know, did you know that maybe a year after Jack climbed up the Beanstalk, Jack <gasps> had another adventure? Would you like to hear the adventure that Jack had? If you're curious to hear this adventure, give me a big nod of the head. I should see friends nodding. Let me see thumbs up. Oh, I see Grace nodding. I see Eden. I see Luca giving me thumbs up and Maya. Okay, so our story is set in the farm country. Now, this is what happens when stories and fables cross the pond and come to the United States. They get a bit of a facelift. And the Jack stories now take place almost entirely on a farm at this point. And Jack, Jack, well, oh, well, he's sleeping back there. Can you see him? Jack has the reputation for being a little bit <clears throat> lazy. He's always napping in the hay when he probably should be helping his mother on the farm, right? Oh, there he is again. He's got his shoes off. He looks real comfortable. And you know where he usually can be found? Sleeping in the barn with his cow. Hey, Jack. Jack, wake up. He can't even hear me, he's sleep. Jack, oh boy. So anyway, our story begins with a very lazy, lazy Jack. Now, one morning Jack woke up, maybe it was late afternoon, and he went to his mother and he said, Mama, I've decided something. I wanna make me some money and I'm gonna get me a job. Because that's how you make money, right? He knew about money. He knew what money was good for. They were probably making a lot of money from the beanstalk, right? They were probably taking those giant beans to the farmer's market. But for whatever reason, Jack wanted to get up and get a job. He was feeling ambitious. And he said, Mama, I'm going to get me a job. And his mama said, Jack, you can't do anything. How you think you're going to get you a job? And he said, I don't know, but I'm going to figure it out. So Jack is carrying himself along right nicely, walking around the community. He heads to the first farmhouse door he can find, and he knocks on the door like this. Can you guys knock with me? Knock, knock, knock. Oh, come on. Knock with me. Knock, knock, knock. Use that ambition. And the door opens, and there is a farm woman there. And she says, oh, what can I do you for, young man? And he says, I reckon that you can give me a job. And she says, oh, well, what can you do, young man? And he says, nothing. Nothing? And the woman says, oh, and she slams the door right in his face. She thought he was a practical joker. And Jack went, huh, I wonder why. So he keeps on going. And he heads to the next farmhouse. And he's looking around. He's like, pretty nice farm. I bet they need someone to help out. So he knocks on the door. Get ready to knock with me. Ready? One, two, three. Knock, knock, knock. And the door opens. And a pair of gentlemen answer the door. And they're like, what could we do you for, young man? And he's like, I reckon you can give me a job. And the gentlemen say, oh, well, what can you do? And Jack once again says, nothing. Oh, say the gentleman, and they slam the door right in his face. Now, Jack doesn't rightly know what's going on. So he's heading down the street, feeling kind of discouraged. And who do you suppose he should meet? <gasps> but the mysterious man. The same mysterious man that helped Yi Shen yesterday, probably. And the same mysterious man that sold him the beans. And the mysterious man says, Jack, 
where are you heading today? And Jack says, well, I'm trying to get me a job, but don't nobody want to hire me. And the man says, why, Jack, what do you tell people when you ask them for a job? He goes, I just tell them I can't do nothing. Well, that's your problem, Jack, says the mysterious man. The next time you knock on someone's door and they ask you what you can do, don't say nothing, say anything. Oh, Jack's like, that's a good idea. How convenient that that mysterious man always comes along right when I need it. And with his cloak that's so hard to get out of the way after you put it on. So Jack heads to the next farmhouse and wouldn't you know it, it's the biggest grandest, most beautiful farm there is. And it's owned by a very serious farmer and his wife. And they're so serious. But Jack heads up to them and he says, hi, uh, my name's Jack. I reckon you could give me a job. And they say the same thing the other people said. They say, oh, well, what is it you can do? And he remembered what the old man had said. And he didn't say nothing. He said, anything. I can do anything you want. And the moment they heard that, they recognized Jack's ambition and they set him to work right away in the chicken house. And there were goats in there and Jack didn't rightly know what to do. He'd never had a job before in his life, but he starts mucking out the chicken droppings and putting down fresh hay and calling to the chickens. And he's starting to think, hey, having a job feels kind of good, right? And then who does he bump into but the farmer's daughter? And she's the most serious girl anyone's ever seen. And she says, I know who you are. You're that boy that's always taking naps in the hay. I don't think you're very funny, but people say you're funny, but I don't think you're very funny. And actually, I don't think anything's very funny. I haven't laughed in 10 years. And do you know how old I am? I'm 10. I've never laughed or smiled in my whole life. And my parents say that the first person who can make me laugh or smile will get 40 bags of money. But I don't think it'll ever happen because I don't think anything is very funny. And I definitely don't think you're funny. And Jack was like, well, thanks for all that information. The girl's name was probably Agatha or something. I don't know. Anyway, so at the end of the day, Jack runs back to the farmer and his wife and he goes, all right, I did my day's work. Now what? And the farmer says, well, it's time to get paid. Round here, you get paid every single day. And he presented Jack with a shiny nickel. And Jack was like, ooh, a nickel. Now, Jack didn't know how much a nickel was worth or what you could buy with it. All he knew was it was his nickel. And he was so excited to have a nickel. So he's heading home, right? And he's like, yeah, I got a nickel. I got a nickel. I got a nickel. I got paid. And I'm going to show Mama that I got paid. And she's going to be so proud of me. Now, Jack knew a shortcut home across the creek, right? So he's trying to get across the creek water, and he's tossing his nickel up in the air and catching it in the other hand, and tossing it in the air and catching it in the other hand, and he's tossing it in the air and plop. Oh no, Jack's nickel fell in the creek and was gone. And he thought, oh well, I'll just go back to work tomorrow and get paid all over again. Now, he goes back home and he sees his mama and his cow, and he's like, mama, mama, guess what? I got me a job. And his mom was like, well, who'd have thunk it? Huh. Well, did you get paid? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I got a shiny nickel. And mama's real excited now. And she goes, well, let me see your nickel. And Jack is just kind of like, oh, oh, oh. And he has to tell her what happened, that he dropped it in the creek. And she says to him, she says, now, what is the point of going out to get a job if you go and throw your money in the creek? Jack, listen to me. The next time the farmer pays you, take your pay and put it in your pocket. Can you guys say that with me? Take your pay and put it in your in your pocket, right? So Jack's like, okay, I'll try to remember that. So he heads back over to the farmer's house. He's real happy to be there. And the first person he sees is Agatha. And she's like, Jack, is it true that you got paid a, 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 a coin yesterday and you threw it in the creek? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> isn't that funny? And she's like, no, I don't think that's funny at all. Anyway, he gets to the farmer and it's gonna be the best day ever for Jack because it's milking day. Milking day, we all know how Jack loves cows, so he is helping milk the cows. And it is going by quick. It's a lot of hard work, but Jack loves to milk the cows. And at the end of milking day, he comes to the farmer and he's like, oh, thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Is it about time for me to get paid? And the farmer's like, sure, around here we get paid every single day. 
and Jack's holding out his hand, waiting for another nickel, but it's not gonna be a nickel today. The farmer pays him a jug of farm fresh milk. And Jack's like, oh, farm fresh milk, delicious and nutritious. So he's heading back home with his farm fresh milk and then he freezes. What did mama say? Don't throw your pay in the air, put it straight in your pocket. You know what Jack did? He poured every last drop of that milk into his pocket. What? And his pockets are now bulging with milk and sloshing and he's trying to walk and there's milk spilling all over the ground. And by the time, by the time he gets home to his mama's kitchen, all the milk is gone. And she looks at him and she goes, I was talking about money, not milk. Jack, if you go back to work tomorrow, don't throw your pay in the air. Don't put it in your pocket. Just carry it on top of your head. She was thinking if he got paid like this, he could carry it on his head and then it wouldn't spill, right? So he goes back to work the next day. Oh, there's Agatha. She's like, Jack, I heard that you poured milk into your pocket. Is that true? And he's like, yeah, isn't that funny? And she's like, no. Anyway, it's butter churning day at the farm. And Jack has never churned butter before in his life. So he gets out the butter churn. He's trying to churn that butter, turning it into butter. Oh, delicious, yummy butter. And he's finding it really difficult. Churning butter is extremely hard. Can you guys churn butter with me? Get your butter churn. And it just takes hours. You've got to churn that butter. And he works and works and works until he's exhausted. And he goes to the farmer and he says, about time for me to get paid. And the farmer is like, yeah, around here you get paid every single day. And of course, today Jack gets paid. <gasps> butter. Oh. Who likes butter? I hope everyone says yes. Butter is delicious and nutritious, we'll say, right? So Jack's like, oh, I got my own butter. And he's getting ready to go home with it. And then he remembers the girl, Agatha. And he's thinking, oh, I got to remember what my mama said or that girl might make fun of me again. Don't throw your pay in the air. Don't put it in your pocket. Oh yeah, carry it on top of your head. So Jack puts all that butter on top of his head and he finds his hat and he puts his hat on and he's carrying himself along just fine. Guess what? It starts to get hot and the butter starts to melt and it's melting down his face and melting into his ears and down his neck. Ooh, it was so uncomfortable and he gets back home and by the time he gets there, his mama looks at him and she goes, all I need is a big old biscuit to roll you around in so I can get some of that butter back. Now, Jack, why did you do that? And he says, you told me to, mama. You said, don't throw it in the air. Uh, don't put it in your pocket, carry it on your head. Right, mama? And she was like, Ugh. And she took a deep breath and she probably counted <laughs> to 10. And she's like, Jack, tomorrow when you get paid, just carry it in front of you or under your arm like a normal person. Oh, and if your pay gets soft and hot, you can dip it down in the creek where it's nice and cool. And then when it's cool, you can keep going. Can you remember that, Jack? And Jack's like, sure, mama. I always do whatever you tell me. And she's like, that's what I'm concerned about, son. <sighs> so he gets to the farm and there's Agatha and she's like, Jack, did you butter yourself yesterday? That is ridiculous. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> fancy meeting you here, by the way, and funny seeing you. And she's like, I don't think anything is funny and I don't think wasting butter is very funny. And Jack's like, okay, bye Agatha, thanks. So now Jack is working in the bakery of the farmer's place and he's helping roll dough and he is helping make cupcakes and he's helping make probably biscuits and bread for the farmer's wife Ooh, and it's a long hard day in the kitchen oh my goodness and he heads to the farmer and he says is it about time for me to get paid and the farmer's like yep around here you get paid every single day and jack you've been working hard so we've got something special for you they gave jack a kitten Oh, it's a kitten, and that is actually a picture of Isadora. When I first brought her home, she was only two months old, and she was so little, and Jack is like a kitten for me? Oh, wow, thank you, Mr. Farmer Man and Mrs. Farmer Lady, but he doesn't want a little kitten like that one. He wants a great big orange tomcat. 
like my friend Duncan back there. And Jack's like, what did mama say? Don't throw your pay in the air. Don't put it in your pocket. Don't carry it on your head. Oh yeah, just carry it like a normal person, like how I am carrying Duncan in this picture. So he's holding his cat. Let's see if I can find a cat here. So he's holding his cat and he's walking along and he's petting his cat and the cat's purring and he is so happy to have a cat. And then the cat starts to feel kind of warm and soft because that's what happens when you pet an animal for too long. And he's like, what did mama say to do if my pay gets warm and soft? Oh yeah, dip it in the creek water, splash. And he put the poor cat in the water and it was all wet and sneezing and bubbling. Oh my goodness. And he gets home and his mama says, Jack, were you trying to drown the poor kitty cat? Jack, listen to me. The next time the farmer pays you, here's what you do. You take what he pays you, all right? And you put it on a leash and you lead it home on the leash. Can you remember that until tomorrow, Jack? And he's like, yep. So he works the whole day with the farmer. It's time to do leaf gathering. It's fall and he is raking leaves and it is now time for Jack to get paid. So he goes running to the farmer and he's like, about time for me to get paid. And the farmer's like, yep, around here we get paid every single day, right? And they paid him some crisp, delicious apple cider in a jug, no less. Ooh, here's my jug of apple cider, right? Oh, and how many of you like apple cider? Oh, it can be sweet and delicious and tangy. And Jack's like, wow, my own jug of apple cider. Thank you very much. And he's heading home and he's as happy as can be. And then he's like, what did mama say now? Don't throw your pay in the air. Don't put it in your pocket. Don't put it on your head. Don't dunk it in the creek. Oh yeah, put it on a leash. So he takes the neck of the bottle, right? He puts it on a leash and he proceeds to swing it behind him and drag his apple cider jug all the way home. Well, the road was full of rocks and it only took one for that apple cider jug to snap in half and all the apple cider to spill out. And he gets home and he hands the broken empty jug to his mother and she takes one look at it and she says, what kind of cat did you start off with, Jack? Jack, now listen to me. Oh, this is getting crazy, all right? When you go back to work tomorrow, whatever the farmer gives you, put it in this David Wojnarik's bag that we got at the museum over the summer and put it on your back. You got that, Jack? Put it in a sack, put it on your back. Can you guys say it with me? Put it in the sack and put it on your back. Just put it in the sack and then you put it on your back. Can you remember that? And Jack says, of course, mama, I can remember. So Jack is heading back to the farm the next day and of course he runs into Agatha and Agatha is just like, Jack, Jack, did you break the apple? So he's like, I don't have time to talk to you today, Agatha. He's got a whole day of work to do on the farm, right? Jack is working so hard on the farm today. And at the end of the day, he runs up to the farmer and he says, is it about time for me to get paid? And the farmer's like, yep, yeah, around here you get paid every single day. But today we have another special treat for you, Jack. Today you get to pick out your own donkey. Oh, Jack loves animals. He's got a cow now, he's got a tomcat, and now he gets to choose a donkey. Oh no, not that donkey. Let's see, I need a really cute one. Oh, look. Look at this donkey, it's so cute. It was the cutest thing he'd ever seen. So he starts to ride the donkey home, right? And then he goes, wait a minute. What did mama tell me? Don't throw your pain in the air. Don't put it in your pocket. Don't put it on your head. Don't dunk it in the creek and don't put it on a leash. Oh yeah, the Wajanaritz bag, all right? So he's trying to figure out how to get a donkey to fit in the bag, right? So he's trying to get it to fit from the back, that doesn't work, okay. He tries it again from the front, try to bag the head, and finally he's like, this is never gonna work. <sighs> and he swears that donkey's laughing at him back there. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, I'm trying to figure this out. And then he finally decides, you know what? I gotta get home somehow. So maybe instead of putting it in the sack, I'll at least put it on my back. He puts a donkey on, I mean, it's a good thing he was farm strong, you know, he'd been working hard. So he's hoisting that donkey up and the donkey's going hee-haw, hee-haw, and Jack's trying to carry it along. And it's just a ridiculous situation. And he's got this donkey on his back. And then, oh my gosh, who do you think he sees? 
it's Agatha, and she looks at him and she goes, Jack, are you carrying a donkey on your back? And Jack goes, <laughs> yeah. And she goes, that's hilarious! <laughs> A boy with a donkey on his back, and the farmer comes out, and the farmer's wife is laughing too. Can you guys laugh with me? <laughs> and he's got the donkey on his back, and then the neighbors are coming out, and the cats are laughing, and Monica, Monica thinks it's funny, and this horse is cracking up, and <laughs> there's Miss Justin, and Miss Melina thinks it's funny too, <laughs> and this toad is cracking. I should hear you laughing by now. Michelle's cracking <laughs> a boy with a donkey on his boo. <laughs> There's Mr. Chap and his family. <laughs> They're thinking it's fun. <laughs> and then, okay, I pulled it together. I pulled. <laughs> Oh, there's my friend Leah, and there's Justin again, again. <laughs> this time. <laughs> oh, there's Aaron and Amanda. <laughs> so, a good laugh really, really helped, Jack made Agatha laugh. And Agatha's father gave Jack 40 bags of money, just like he promised for making him laugh. And Jack is now friends with Agatha. And now he's got all his animal friends too. And <laughs> there's the farmer and his wife. And they give him the 40 bags of money. So Jack never had to get a job again. And he got to go relax with his cow, which was all he wanted to do in the first place. And that is the story of Jack's first job. The end. <sighs> Did you guys like that story? Yes. <sighs>